This is a picture test in practical histology of the gastrointestinal tract. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. What is the name given to the arrangement of cells indicated by the interrupted lines? And which of the cells A, B, and C is an endothelial cell? Now this section shows part of the classical structural unit of the liver, the hepatic lobule. As you can see here that a hepatic lobule is roughly hexagonal. This is one of them. Uh, here is another one, a hepatic lobule. The hexagon is outlined by connective tissue and by portal tracts like this one. This is a place of a portal tract. This is another portal tract which are located at the angles usually. And the hepatocytes, they are arranged around a centrilobular venule or a central vein. So this is the central vein which is shown here as well. Uh, this is another central vein here and so on. The hepatocytes, they form an arrangement of plates or cords. And these, uh, this is, these hepatic plates or cords are indicated by the interrupted lines. In between the cords, there are sinusoids, wide vascular spaces, wide capillaries, and they, which are lined by endothelium cells, endothelial cells, simple uh, squamous epithelium. And they have no basement membrane to provide for exchange, better exchange. The hepatic cords, uh, which are again, they are represented by the interrupted lines, hepatic cords, they are one cell thick, and each hepatocyte is thus exposed to blood at least on two sides. And so this will increase the exchange between the blood and the hepatocytes. Endothelial cells, as I mentioned, they line the sinusoids, and they are the majority of the lining cells of the sinusoids. The endothelium, by definition, is the simple squamous epithelium that lines the blood vessels. All blood vessels, they are lined by endothelium. Capillaries, veins, arterioles, arteries, even lymphatics, all are lined by endothelium. Although the shape of the cell cannot be seen in this stain, but the shape is reflected on the nucleus, which is a flattened nucleus. So the cell indicated by C has a flattened nucleus and represents an endothelial cell. Cell A also lines the sinusoids, but it has an ovoid nucleus and it is less numerous than the endothelial cell. This, this cell, cell A, with the ovoid nucleus is a Kupfer cell. As I mentioned, they are scattered among the endothelial cells less numerous, and they are phagocytic cells, form part of the monocyte macrophage defense system. They participate in the removal of senile erythrocytes, for example, and uh, toxic substances, um, um, other uh, particulate debris from the circulation. Cell B is part of the cord, which lies between the sinusoids, so it's a hepatocyte. As you can see, that the hepatocytes, they are large polyhedral cells with a centrally located uh, rounded nucleus and the cytoplasm is darkly stained due to numerous organelles in the cytoplasm. Identify the epithelium A and B, which junction is marked by the interrupted line. The epithelium B is a stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinized. It consists of multiple layers of cells, so it is stratified. The most superficial cells are squamous, thus this is a stratified squamous epithelium. This type of epithelium in the gut is located in the oral cavity, in the pharynx, esophagus, and uh, the anal canal. It's a protective epithelium. The epithelium in A is simple columnar epithelium. It's composed of mucus cells, as you can see by their almost empty cytoplasm. And these, they cover the luminal surface of the wall, and also they cover the pits, which are present here. Again, 
these columnar cells in B are packed with cytoplasmic mucigene granules, which are stained poorly with uh, hematoxylin and eosin. And this is the lining epithelium of the stomach, where the mucus cells, they secrete the protective mucus that protects against autodigestion of the hydrochloric acid. The junction is thus the gastroesophageal junction. If you look at the right side of the interrupted line, at the right side of the junction, uh, this is the proximal part of the tube, and you can see that in the submucosa, there are uh, several mucus glands. These are characteristic for the esophagus, especially the um, either the upper part or the lower part of the esophagus, as in this situation where the esophagus meets the stomach. And also note here that the transition of the epithelium, of the type of the epithelium, is an abrupt transition. Now, such an abrupt transition of epithelium occurs at other points along the gastrointestinal tract, apart from the gastroesophageal junction. We have an abrupt change of epithelium at the gastroduodenal junction, and then again at the ileocecal junction, and then again at the rectoanal junction. What is the main function of the mucosa in this part of the gut? Name the epithelium that covers the outermost layer, which is indicated by the yellow arrow. Now this section shows, definitely, it shows the features of the small intestine. The mucosal surface is made up of numerous finger-like projections, the villi. The mucosa between the uh, villi is uh, formed into crypts, like this one, crypts of Liberkuhn. The lining epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells that appear to have an empty cytoplasm, apical cytoplasm, having the shape of a goblet. Most of the columnar cells, apart from the goblet cells, most of them, but not all, uh, they are simple columnar cells that are mainly concerned with absorption. Uh, so they are called enterocytes. They are present on the villus and continue on the crypts. And they are the main absorptive cells. And this is the main function of the epithelium. Higher magnification, of course, will show a brush border representing the microvilli of the luminal surface. This is a diagram of the, an enterocyte, columnar cell, basally located nucleus, and the apical surface shows tiny finger-like projections. These projections, they don't appear on the light microscopy, but their presence is indicated by the presence of a, a hazy brush border. They can only be seen in electron microscopy. And they further ac accentuate the surface area for absorption. Now, outside the mucosa is the submucosa, which consists of loose collagenous connective tissue. Absence of Brunner's glands here in the submucosa excludes that um, this is a duodenum. So it, it's, uh, it could be either an, a jejunum or the ileum. And uh, the absence of abundant lymphoid follicles in the submucosa which is a feature of the ileum, favors that this is a section of the jejunum. Outer still, outer to the submucosa, is the muscularis propria, also called the muscularis externa. And the outermost layer is a thin layer of adventitia, which consists of loose connective tissue with large blood vessels and nerves. And in some parts of the gut where the surface is covered by peritoneum, the adventitia is referred to as the serosa. And in, in these places, like this one, this is a, a jejunum, or even if it is an ileum, it is completely covered by peritoneum. And so we have a serosa. And in the serosa, there is an additional layer, lining layer, of the adventitia itself. And this is a layer of simple squamous epithelium, which is called mesothelium. And this is the place where the arrow is pointing. So the arrow is pointing at the place where the epithelium covers the adventitia, the mesothelium. It has a special name, mesothelium. The lining epithelium of blood vessels is called endothelium, and the lining epithelium here of the adventitia of the gut, when, it is, when peritoneum is present, is called mesothelium. Identify the structures A and B in which layer of the wall is each one located.
This is a section of the gut tube showing the four distinct functional layers that characterize the tube, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and adventitia. The inner layer, where the marker A is located, is the mucosa. And as you can see here is that it consists of three parts, epithelium, lamina propria of connective tissue, and a very thin uh, interrupted layer of smooth muscle fibers called the muscularis mucosa. The epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium, non-keratinizing. Uh, in fact, this is a section of the esophagus. So B is located in the submucosa, and characteristically, the submucosa of the esophagus, they have mucous glands, and mainly in the upper and lower part of the esophagus. These, they aid in lubrication. B, again, marks the SINI, which are, as you can see, they are mostly mucus. However, in, in some places, probably not very clear in this section, there are some serous demilunes as well. So that's why they are called serromucus glands, because they have serous demilunes. These are the SINI. This is where the gland secretes. But the secretion of the gland should be transported through a duct. And so these ducts, they traverse the mucosa, and you can see one of them here in A. Or this is another one, and this is another, another duct. They open on the surface of the mucosa. The ducts, the lining of the duct does not secrete, but it's only a structural epithelium. It only transports the secretion of the SINI, which are present in the submucosa. Higher magnification would show the ducts lined by a simple cuboidal epithelium. Identify the cells A. What is the term used to describe their characteristic appearance? And what is their function? This section shows the mucosa of part of the gut tube. We can see the epithelium is a simple columnar epithelium composed of mucus cells that they cover the luminal surface and uh, also into the pits. And uh, this um, stain, it contains periodic acid chip. It stains the mucus, which is present in these mucus secreting cells uh, with a dark magenta color. The presence of these surface mucus cells, the presence of the pits, um, favors that this part of the gut tube is the stomach. And you can see here that there are multiple uh, simple uh, straight tubular glands uh, open into the uh, gastric pits. And the cells that are present in these glands, including the cells represented in A, which are present in the isthmus or the neck or the upper part of the gland, like this one, is a large cell with a centrally rounded nucleus, um, giving uh, them the um, fried egg appearance. So these are the uh, oxygenetic cells or the uh, parietal cells that are responsible for the production of um, hydrochloric acid. These cells also produce the intrinsic factor, which is necessary for the absorption of vitamin B12 in the terminal ileum. Identify the layers A and B. List two types of cells located in the epithelium at A. This is a section of the gut tube showing the four distinct functional layers that characterize the tube, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and adventitia. The inner layer, which is marked A, is the mucosa, and as you can see, it consists of three parts, consists of epithelium, lamina propria of connective tissue, and a thin layer of smooth muscle fibers called muscularis mucosa. Then we have the B marks the muscularis propria, or muscularis externa, to differentiate it from the muscularis mucosa, which is part of the mucosa. Muscularis externa or muscularis propria is much thicker than the muscularis uh, mucosa, and uh, uh, the uh, smooth muscle cells are arranged in, in two distinct layers, as you can see here, an inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. That's why you see the smooth muscle fibers in, in these uh, two layers, uh, they are sectioned either longitudinally or transversely. So depending on the uh, orientation of the entire section. And by this way, we can determine the orientation of um, a section. 
For example, here you can see that the inner layer is sectioned longitudinally. So this means that these layers, and because the inner layer is uh, circularly arranged, then this section is a cross section of the gut tube that is cut perpendicular to the length of the tube. And that's why the longitudinal muscle fibers, which are present in the outer layer, they uh, are cut transversely. Now, returning to the second part of the question about the cell types of the epithelium, note that the epithelium is simple columnar epithelium with multiple mucus secreting goblet cells. There are no villi, thus it's not a small intestine because the sections of the small intestine are characterized by the presence of the villi, finger-like projections. But this section shows crypts. Thus, the section has the features of large intestine. Crypts are simple tubular glands. They are rarely sectioned along their whole length. Thus, different profiles of the glands appear in the same section. Most of the columnar cells of the mucosa are absorptive cells. Their principal function is the absorption of water and salt. As the feces pass along the large intestine and become progressively dehydrated, the mucus becomes increasingly important in protecting the mucosa from trauma, and that's why we can see an abundance of goblet cells. Other cells in the mucosa, apart from the absorptive cells and goblet cells, uh, they include stem cells that can differentiate to form any other type of cell in the mucosa, and as well as the presence of intraepithelial lymphocytes.